Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, citizens and residents of Barbados. I have here with me this afternoon, Dr. Kenneth George, who is the chief medical officer, as well as Dr. Corey Ford, who is the infections control specialist and the doctor with responsibility for the management of the Harrison Point isolation facility. After several days of aggressive contact tracing related to a positive COVID-19 case diagnosed on September 24th, the Ministry of Health and Wellness has discovered a cluster of COVID-19 cases within one family. Six members of the family were diagnosed with COVID-19 between September 30th and yesterday. The cluster has been traced to a Barbadian woman who returned from the United Kingdom on September 19th and tested positive for COVID-19 after a second test on September 24th. The first two family members to test positive were a housekeeper who worked in the woman's home and her nephew who were both diagnosed on September 30th. Last Friday, the housekeeper's 30-year-old niece tested positive, and yesterday, the niece's four-month-old daughter and her husband, aged 34, both were confirmed with the viral illness. Another niece, a 15-year-old student of Ellerslie Secondary School, also tested positive yesterday. All seven people are in isolation, some of them asymptomatic, and others with mild symptoms. The ministry will continue its contact tracing efforts this week to identify everyone with whom these individuals came into contact. Everyone will undergo a COVID-19 test and the results will be shared with the public in the daily COVID-19 update. This is the third cluster that we would have identified since the start of the outbreak in Barbados. And as in the other two instances, the public health officers are carrying out their investigations diligently so as to stem the spread. The fact that we have been able to identify these cases so quickly means that we are able to isolate the patients and limit their contact with other members of the community. I assure residents that there is still no evidence of community spread of COVID-19 in Barbados, since as long as we are able to trace the source of an infection, as we have in this case, we are able to bring the situation under control. Community spread, as many of you already know, occurs when the source of the infection is unknown. And so at this stage, I just want to dismiss what I I've been seeing in, on social media, all kinds of things suggesting that we have community spread in Barbados. I want to reassure the public that Barbados has no community spread at this time. As Minister of Health and Wellness, I commit to keeping you updated on this latest development and urge you to continue to follow the public health protocols that we have in place to keep you safe. Wear your mask in public spaces, socially distance at least three feet, and practice good hand hygiene. Finally, I ask that as the contact tracers broaden their net over the next several days, that you, the members of the public, will give them your full cooperation and assist us in continuing to keep all residents of Barbados safe. Thank you, and I now invite you, um, if there are any questions that you have, that 
we will attempt to answer those questions for you. Thank you. Obviously, well, you, you have a system in place, more than borders, and here locally, something has slipped through the cracks um, at the border. Uh, is there any no further need in terms of tightening quarantine measures or anything else in place to ensure that um, you know we tighten up protocols from that from that end? Well, first of all, let me um, deal with um, the the protocols. We have protocols in place which are not cast in stone because we are fighting against a virus that and we are confronting a situation that is very fluid and we have to respond to the fluidity of the situation as a result of that we have been amending protocols as situations develop and in this particular case i have to tell you that the protocols, there they were, they were no cracks in the protocols. The, the, the seed case in this situation, the index case, was a person who returned to Barbados, and that person returned from a country that was categorized as a medium risk country at the time. And as a result, the protocol clearly stated that such persons are to be tested on arrival or come with a valid PCR test and then as long as they satisfy those requirements then they have been free to go and that has been going on now for the last two or three months. We then decided to implement a, a, a test, a second test for persons from medium risk countries because we saw some activity that uh, made us feel that we needed to introduce such a test and we did so and so that is what happened on this occasion and that test is administered on day five and that is how we were able to get this positive person a positive result but the protocols were not breached in any way okay. now uh, minister you, you you mentioned that uh, you have traced the family of six or uh, seven i'm not sure which one mm -hmm. six All right now you're saying you are that there is no community spread you're traced to the family of six how far along in tracing how the persons that they have interacted with, how far along is that contact tracing process at this moment? That contact tracing process is continuing and a lot of work has been done. In fact, several persons have already been tested and have tested negative. But the, the whole question of community spread, I just um, indicated to you exactly what defines community spread. And certainly we do not have community spread in Barbados. We've been able to link the six cases to the index case. So we have satisfied the requirements. We are not in any difficulty in that regard. Defense Force has been our great partner. Let me take out this. Our, the Barbados Defense Force has been a great party, partner in assisting us moving um, individual um, passengers or travelers. And that um, the hotels, too, also provide transport. Because I don't know if you know this, a lot of taxi drivers, etc., have been trained in safe transport of patients. We found that to be a critical issue that we needed to, to deal with, and we dealt with that up front early in the epidemic. So people are being transferred in a safe cordons to where they could be tested. We have also indicated that persons in the high risk category would not be tested at the, our polyclinics because there was so much movement of persons, so we are, we are not going to be testing persons in the high risk category at our polyclinics across Barbados. Okay. Uh, Minister, you mentioned that one of the persons in the family is a student at a secondary school. Um, what's the situation? Did that person attend school? Um, what's the situation for that school at the moment?
thank you very much for that question. We have had um, held a meeting with the Ministry of Education, and uh, the Ministry will address those issues a little later in the day so that they can give you the specifics as to what the Ministry of Education is going to be doing. But we have passed all of the information which we have onto the Ministry of Education, so I would suggest that you await that briefing from the Minister, Minister of Education. Which is coming today? Today. Okay. I just wanted to clarify, you said that you have mobile swabbing centers going on and also transportation for taxis. But there was a recent post on social media where a person said they got on a ZR and went to get their sack of tests, which is why it caused some alarm on social media. So I want to get your response and thoughts on that. Well, I am not sure of that specific individual case, but as I said, um, that should not occur, and therefore persons should use pre-approved transportation to get their second test. Um, just like we tell persons that you can't use your own personal vehicle to travel from places if you're a medium risk to go to your home, we try to put measures in place that um, we hope will cover all eventualities. Minister, again, again, just to get back to the, the, case, the original case, you mentioned that the, the point of contact would have been a housekeeper um, during quarantine because she hadn't received, the person hadn't received their second test yet. During quarantine, I mean, is the housekeeper supposed to, to be in that type of proximity? And then in terms of training as well uh, for those persons that are doing uh, that are the quarantine centers, or the hotels that are quarantined and so on. I mean, uh, are they getting special equipment? Are they trained? What, 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 what can you tell us with that? Of course, the persons at the hotels and the villas are being provided with training um, from the Ministry of Health and Wellness um, and, and Sensitization. But the case that you are referring to, let me stress again, that that particular individual was not in quarantine because the person came in from a medium risk country and the protocol clearly states that if you are coming from a medium risk country, the requirement is for a valid PCR test on arrival. That is the one that you have overseas which is valid within a 72 hour period or you are tested here um, by the personnel from the best Dos Santos lab. If the result of the test is negative, you are allowed to go. Uh, and that has been going on now for quite some time. I'm, I'm at a loss, Ms. Minister. You said that um, you implemented uh, a second test but, for those persons. But I never said to you that the persons were in quarantine. Well, I mean, <laughs> this, this is a little confusing because if, 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 you, if you're requiring a second test and they're not in quarantine, what, what would, then would be the point? The point would be this. Um, if you have a situation where people come in and with the negative tests, and they are allowed to go, then, and that has been happening for some time. We then introduced that as a check, checks and balances, to see where we were with people who were coming in from medium risk countries. And in the event that one of the persons tested positive, as in the case here, after five days, it gives us an opportunity, that in itself, Con contains the spread of the virus because if we didn't do that test and it's a, uh, initially we, we were doing random testing but now we've made it uh, mandatory for all persons coming in and it is similar for example to a person who may be in transit although a person is in transit and may be going out of Barbados a few hours after they arrive we still conduct that test and the value of the test to us is that if the person tests positive even though they've departed the country at least we know that that person tested positive and we can still do some measure of contact tracing within the airport. If we did not have that test in place, we would, might never know that that person tested positive. So we are always looking at various ways and means to minimize the risk. Remember, that what, what we're doing here is managing risk because we cannot, no country can prevent COVID from entering its, um, its borders. 
that's a reality that we all have to live with. But the thing about it is to be able to manage the risk. And that is exactly what we have been doing. And from time to time, we have been making changes to the protocols, recognizing that we live in a COVID world, a COVID environment. We are not immune to having COVID here in Barbados, but life must continue and we must learn to live with COVID and to manage the risk in order to facilitate the kind of life that we, um, we want to live. I, I, mm -hmm. I understand that, but, but what I'm trying to, try to, I'm trying to get the facts correct. Um, the person that came in uh, in September, they required a second test based on what you, you're telling me. Yes. So while requiring that second test, they were free to, to, to still go about? Yes, because they were not in quarantine. So they were not in quarantine? No. Nope. Medium so, risk persons from medium risk countries are not quarantined on arrival unless obviously they test they, they don't have a test and when we do the testing here in Barbados they remain in quarantine until the result is back but once you have a negative test you are allowed to carry carry on with your business okay, so there's so there are now going to be some plans to, to, to try to adjust that to ensure that we, we tighten that that aspect I mean because no. So what we will do um, from time to time, it's an iterative process, and we will change in this category of countries. So um, you, you all know the United Kingdom, effective the 1st of October, is high risk. This young lady came, went from one category to another category. We have also said that we do this based on the science. We have specific ways of identifying countries and making sure that they are in the appropriate risk category. And there's one caveat, we also must realize that many persons are visitors. So we tend to give a two to three day leeway before the protocols come into effect. So it is based on good public health science. What we use, if you want to know that information, is the cumulative cases per 100,000 population and we have various cut points, which have been suggested as good cut points, and that is how we come up with the categorization of a particular country. Okay. The family of six, um, are they currently being quarantined at a government facility? And what's the status of their, their what's their position at the moment, including their status? Medium. Good afternoon, everyone. I will answer that question. Um, the range of, of family members um, range between the age of uh, four months to, to, to 30 um, years of age. Um, at present at the facility, um, um, the initial index case at the facility is actually um, doing quite well. Um, had a few minor mild symptoms, uh, but we've been monitoring her. Um, the other um, persons at the facility are currently in our primary isolation component of that the facility. Um, the four-month um, um, baby um, is doing quite well, was seen by the, by the pediatricians and continues to do well. Um, and no great concerns there at this particular point. Um, the 25-year-old um, male who is there at the facility, uh, initially um, um, from our perspective, we were concerned and transferred him to the primary isolation area. I could, I'm pleased to report this morning after initial um, treatment um, that he's actually doing um, quite well. Um, and, and quite honestly, I might very well um, remove him from there and back into the tertiary area um, shortly. Um, the other two are there um, really um, for close monitoring because there are, there are new cases at this point. So I would say that all of the, 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 the contacts in general at this point are all stable. Uh, only one of them at any point during this period actually um, um, was, 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 was ill by our standards. All right, thank you very much. As I indicated earlier, we will be communicating with you uh, over the next day or two as developments occur. We will be continuing with the aggressive contact tracing that we've started. And I just want to give the assurance to the people of Barbados once more that we do not have community spread in Barbados. That yes, we do have 
a cluster, and we've had clusters before, and we will deal with this one in the same way that we dealt with the others. We will be aggressive in, in our contact tracing, and we will contain any situations that develop. What I must say to all Barbadians is that this, as I said some months ago, is a war, the war against COVID. And we have several layers of defense. And we have several layers of defense because we recognize that the system is not foolproof and we cannot, by any one means, keep COVID out of Barbados. So the borders may be the first line of defense. Testing and isolating or quarantining persons, that's the second line of defense. The third line of defense is all those persons working in, the, in hospitality institutions and persons working in pharmacies, private doctors and clinics to be vigilant and to inform us if there's anything unusual that is happening. But I want to say to all of us that the greatest line of defense is actually the last. And that has to do with each and every resident and citizen of this country following the protocols and doing what we are supposed to do. We, each of us, we are responsible for our own safety in this COVID era. So I'm urging all persons, all of us, wear the masks in public spaces, physical distancing, hand sanitizing, be vigilant, persons using public transport, wear your mask. If you are out boating, wear your mask. That is the line of defense that will save us in the long run. And I'm counting on all Barbadians to do so because you did so at the last, during the past several months. But we need now to ramp it up. And that is what is going to keep us going because this country has to continue functioning. We want to continue functioning and providing a safe environment for visitors and residents alike because this is who we are and we will never surrender and we will never retreat. This is our thing. We have this, just cooperate and everything will be all right. It's a challenge which we are facing, but it's a challenge that we will overcome just as we did during the last six